the way it goes. So, but, uh, so Michelle, uh, <laughs> I feel like that's become the catchphrase of the show. So Michelle, yeah. um, <laughs> I, uh, I may have been hiding something from you that I think I should come clean about. Uh, so do you ever, I'm guessing you don't because you're not a, like a monster, but do you ever Google yourself? No, no. Uh, sometimes I do. Really? Um, I, th yeah. <laughs> and, uh, apparently I've been hiding something from everyone I care about. Because oh. you see, um, celebrity gossip is extremely popular on the internet. No. And it's so popular that the internet uh, covers lots of people, including apparently me. So really? if you ever, you know, I, sometimes I, I will like be talking to somebody about like, I don't know, Mark Cuban or something. And I'll be like, hey how successful is so-and-so or whatever? So I'll look at Mark Cuban net worth, you know, mm -hmm. just to see what he's worth or what people think he's worth really. And uh, it turns out if you go to, <laughs> I, I don't know if I should plug these, these websites. I don't think I'll say the names, but because they're like clearly scams. But um, if you go, if you Google Henrik Kuto net worth, some info comes up. Really? And uh, I wanted to read this to you. Um, <laughs> Uh, discover Henrik Kuto net worth, salary, biography, height, dating, wiki. Scroll below to learn details, information about Henrik Kuto's salary, estimated earning, lifestyle, and income reports. Henrik Kuto is best known as a film director. He was born on September 10, 1986 in Dayton. On this website, he is one of the successful film director. He has ranked on the wow. list of those famous people who were born on September 10, 1986. He is wow. one he is one of the richest film director who was born in Dayton. That's amazing. Whoa. It may be true. <laughs> then it just says like bio wiki, my first and last name, profession film director, age 33 years old, birthday Zodiac. Wait, what? Birthday and Zodiac. It says birth sign Capricorn. I was born in September. Underneath it, it says September 10th. That's, I mean, I am no expert on the made up bullshit. <laughs> that is uh, astrology. But I don't think I'm a Capricorn. I don't you have like a sun sign and a moon sign and a star sign and like a thing and another thing. I I don't know how it works. I just know one sign. I don't know if it's the sun sign or the moon sign or whatever. So maybe you're a Capricorn under the other sign. I don't even uh, know what Capricorn, what month that is. I have I no either. idea. So under birth sign, it says birth date, September 10, 1986. Then under birth date, it says birthday, September 10. Uh, <laughs> it's it's different and then it says birthplace dayton not ohio just and then, dayton and then under country it's blank oh wow it's like like <laughs> maybe dayton is its own country but then how come it wouldn't say dayton yeah for a country i don't know maybe you're unincorporated <laughs> and just oh, nothing just nothing. Uh, then under height and weight, they've got nothing. It says N slash A. Uh, body measurements, not available. Eye That's color, good. unknown. Not, oh, wow. not available. No one knows it. It cannot be known. <laughs> then uh, hair color, unknown. Wow. It, cannot it doesn't be say, known. It's not that hard to find out what your hair color is and your eye color. I feel like my eye color is harder. A lot of people I talk to are just like, your eyes are brown. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're not. What? Uh, my hair is very obviously brown. Uh, mm -hmm. But my eyes are a weird hazel. Anyway. Uh, then under the, So it says hair color, eye color, unknown. Then under dress size, it says not known. Then under shoe size, not known. Huh. Then under family and relatives, it says father not known, mother not known, siblings not known, and relatives not known. Wow. Um, but here's where the nitty gritty gets. And this is what I've been hiding, I guess, from all of my loved ones. Mm -hmm. Henrik Kuto net worth. Henrik Kuto's estimated net worth, salary, income, cars, lifestyle, and much more details has been updated below. Let's check oh. how rich is Henrik Kuto in 2020. 
My estimated net worth in 2019 is one to five million dollars, approximately. Wow. I am a very lucky guy. Now, but even more impressive, my previous year's net worth in 2018 was 100,000 to one million dollars. So I had a massive improvement. You did really good. I did great. I'm so proud of you. (laughs) Then annual salary says under review. Uh, income source says primary income source film director. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I guess I, I've been hiding from everyone, including my bank account and, <laughs> and everything that I have one to five million dollars approximately. Well, isn't there like places you could put it like in other countries or something weird? You just put Even it there. small island nations? I don't know. I wouldn't know anything about that either, Michelle. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) The secret is you put them under companies that are half of your name. Yeah. Shell company. So, uh, under FAC, I would read it, but it's just they have no answers for anything. Whoa, okay. Okay. Okay, so under Henrik Kuto age in this year, it says 33 years old, which is accurate. How many children does he have? He has no children. I'm surprised it doesn't just say unavailable. No, Um, they just know. They know. But then it says, how many relationships did he have? Oh, and he is always capitalized like I'm the Abrahamic God. Uh, (laughs) But it says, how many relationships did he have? And it says he had at least one relationship in the past. That's a safe bet, I feel like. It's like reading a fortune cookie, except it's about my life. Dude, you could even say that about me, though. Like, I had at least (laughs) one relationship. Exactly. Ugh. So then it says, is he having any relationship affair? And it says, this information is not available. Oh, it's a secret. This one you're going to really like, though. How old is Henrik? Does he dead or alive? (laughs) It says, does he dead or alive? And it says, he is now 33 years old. Noted, he was born on September 10, 1986. I like how the information they have, they repeat over and over and over. Well, they don't have a lot of information, so they have to, you know? So uh, that <laughs> is the first result when I search my net worth. Uh, there is another place called net worth. Oh, I don't want to read the name. Sorry. There's another one. I don't want to send people these because I'm pretty sure they're just, I mean, the information may be a little inaccurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're just trying to get people to click there so they can sell ads. Probably. But um, the page isn't loading, which is probably just as well. So, but I feel bad because, you know, like the other day I was hanging out with my buddy Dave and he bought me rallies when I'm a millionaire. I probably should have bought him rallies. It was nice of him. You know? I mean, I guess the gesture's fine. Those people like to do things like that, you know? Sometimes you gotta let people, you know, I don't know. The normies. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. poors. <laughs> So I just, I wasn't going to read you this I uh, until I, but as you can tell, as, uh, the more I read, the more I was like, this is great. How old is Henrik? Is, <laughs> how, old, how old is Henrik? Uh, what was it? Him dead or alive? It was like, the English was just it was, completely It broken. was weirder than that. Yeah. But I, yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, um, so that's my, uh, my day is I discovered what I've been hiding from all of my loved ones for such a long time. Well, at least it was, I mean, it's something that's good for you. I mean, I'm a little bit hurt that you didn't tell me because I, I don't know why you wouldn't. It's not like I'm going to ask you for money, but can I have some money? <laughs> really? Can I have some money? Uh, okay. Well, here's the thing. I can't give you money for tax reasons, but I can give you very valuable pieces of art. Then do I have to sell them though? I mean, you can do whatever you, it's a gift. You can do whatever you want with it. It's a lot of work. I mean, I could just work and get money. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm keeping this John Lennon for myself. Good. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, so today uh, on my day, uh, I had, it sounds, you know, the, the last few weeks of the show sounds like all I ever do is go to the vet with my pets. 
Yeah. Um, so a, cu- a couple weeks ago, Henwolf had some pretty, uh, not, not serious, but you know, had a lot of surgical procedures. They were all mm-hmm. not life-threatening, but there were a lot of them. And that same day that uh, I, I picked her up, I actually had Chicano get his checkup, my other dog. And in the checkup, they were like, he looks great. His blood works great, but there's tartar on his teeth. I really think we need to get in there and clean them. So, and Henwolf had just had a teeth cleaning, but then also had like some teeth removed and had, uh, you know, tumors removed and stuff like that. So Chicano is currently resting, drugged up in a kennel right now. His teeth cleaning was a success. He Yay. is fine. Um, they did an x-ray and found only one small tooth really should be removed. Um, and they said they were thrilled they caught it early. Um, but they said that uh, uh, some of the smaller teeth, as dogs get much older, sometimes they'll absorb into the jawbone. It just, like, eats them? Like, the jawbone just kind of takes it. I don't, I don't exactly understand it, but they said that that does happen sometimes, and it's not ideal. So they were thrilled they caught it, like, very early on, so they just extracted the small tooth. And What, uh, what happens when it absorbs it that's not ideal? I, I, I don't, I'm guessing that there could be complications. Okay. Like I, it could I, cause an infection or something, I would wow. guess. It could not also. Um, I remember when I was a kid, we had dogs that were like 16 years old and had never had their teeth cleaned once. But I also know that I've also had dogs that like when they were 12, it was like, holy crap, their mouth is a complete disaster because you guys didn't keep up on it. So yeah. I'm very aggressive about the dog's teeth being cleaned every two years unless the vet asks for it sooner. Okay. So... But uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, he needed an extraction, x-rays. I'm happy that he had it done, even though it means that the bill's going to be higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, it won't be higher, sort of. The estimate, w- the estimate assumes two extractions and one x-ray. So it actually will be the lowest of the estimates. It's just that if they hadn't done any of that, it would have been lower than the estimate. Right. But right. I'll live. Yeah. It's fine. I'm happy he's okay. I have. I, I told you this earlier, and it's completely true. I have it so bad for that doggy for both my dogs. But Chicano is like this sweet dog. He's very gentle. He's very scared of the world sometimes. And um, I felt I took a nap on the couch because I had to take him to the vet at eight in the morning. So I took a nap on the couch, and I literally dreamt that he was on the couch napping with me because he naps with me like every time I take a nap so sweet i literally dreamed he was napping with me and i woke up to the vet calling me to tell me he woke up and like looking around like where is he oh right maybe he was napping with you he came oh pets are interdimensional maybe (laughs) and then they just came and laid down with you and then he woke up and then the vet (laughs) called i don't know Uh, see for somebody who's never watched unsolved mysteries that's some unsolved mystery shit right there so you still, I watched uh, a little you, bit. What did you watch, like on Pluto? Uh, yeah, but I didn't wa- I didn't pay that much attention, <laughs> and I didn't really enjoy it. Oh, well, that I'm part's sorry. hurtful. I, I I like really didn't watch it. I think the day that I was like trying to watch it, I was also like really stressed out about something like all the days. So <laughs> I was about to say like the days that you're not. Yeah, like today that? and yesterday. <laughs> And so, like, I, I will try again, and I will try to watch a full one and understand it. I mean, I just think you might it, – it's a nice thing to put on in the background. I actually go to sleep to it, like, every night because the channel – well, that's – did you say that's sad? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, because – because uh, you know how, like, a lot of people fall asleep watching, like, true crime and stuff? I think it's because of the, the narrators. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, listening to the human voice is soothing. You, Even if they're saying terrible things. Then you should just, like, watch, like, Deadliest Catch or something. And Oh, well, point me to the Deadliest Catch Pluto TV channel, Michelle. Oh, I guess, I guess there was Madam one. Madam Rockefeller think. with your cable service. <laughs> Michelle the Boomer with her, with her cable that she uses oh. to watch TV. Oh. Yeah, I feel bad. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, it just, I find it soothing, you know, listening to the voices telling the stories. The only mm-hmm. problem is when I hear the update, I have to roll over and put on my glasses because yeah. a lot of times it's text only if it's been updated like in the last five years, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. They keep updating it. So 
Anyway, I don't know. But I'm glad that you tr are trying. Thank you. That's the Thank first you. step in recovery is, you know, you have to try to recover from not watching. Yeah, I have to admit it. that I have a problem from <laughs> not watching it and then watch it. What did you watch when you were homesick from school? I don't know, like like Nickelodeon and stuff. I had younger siblings. What do you want? So you watched like what was what was the Nickelodeon for kid the little kids called during Nick no Jr.? I didn't no I just watched oh yeah because that was on during the day so then what did I watch? ah you liar uh maybe like I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I watched <laughs> well I mean so yeah there was Nick Jr. which was impossible to watch I remember when Nick Jr. Really started but it was only on until like twelve. So yeah, you just maybe, had to or get maybe through. One. It, it, it was, depends. Yeah. It wasn't on. It was by the time you would be getting out of school, it was pretty much always over, mm -hmm. and they would start yeah. showing like Doug and stuff to yeah. to make us happy. Um, for me, and maybe this will help jog your stupid memory. Uh, when <laughs> when I was sick home from school, I would watch uh, Unsolved Mysteries because uh, Lifetime would show it all the time. Mm -hmm. I would watch Star Trek: The Original Series on Sci Fi Channel. Um, I would watch uh, The Price is Right. Um, I would watch, oh, what else was there? I mean, then it depends. Like, that was probably my earliest memories of being homesick. Because um, Sci-Fi Channel would have all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I would often just put on the Sci-Fi Channel. Because they would show Star Trek and they would show, sometimes they would show Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, they would show, um, every now and then I'd catch an episode of, like, uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, you remember something? Yeah, that's okay. You can keep no, going. No, I was running out of memories. What, oh. what, what do you remember? So, so I mean, it would, like, I was trying to figure it out. I still don't know what I would watch when I was, like, a lot younger now. Um, like, I guess I would probably have, like, because for a while we had Disney. So I guess I could have been watching that. Like, I don't really know. We're so old. We remember when Disney was a pay channel. Yeah, yeah. I remember one day flipping through my TV and just ha when I was like 18, 17, 18 years old and just we had the Disney channel and I was like, what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't even know if I do. Like I, it's, it's, I don't care. But, um, <laughs> but when I was older and I was home, you know, like a little, little bit older, like maybe middle school and high school kind of deal, I would watch MTV or Fuse or, or like that MMU, that Much Music channel. Like I just watched music videos constantly. Well, this is when you were much older then. Fuse didn't exist when we were like eight or nine. Oh yeah, but there was, there was that Much Music, the, the Canadian channel that had a, a uh, whatever this place is called, the US Place channel called MMUSA. So that was first. Okay. Um, but that, so that was, but yeah, but I don't remember. I really think I was just watching like Nick and mm -hmm. probably just like suffering through like Nick Jr. or something yeah, like that. Blues Clues and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really hard. Uh, did you, uh, uh, so, so since you brought up MTV, I have to ask, did you like sit up uh, in the afternoons watching Total Request Live? Um, you know, not really. No, because uh, I was... Like, it's not like I'd never watched it, but it wasn't really, by the time I was watching those kind of things, I wasn't really into, like, super popular music. Um, so I was watching. You were too cool for it by the time it was on, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I did watch it sometimes, just not a lot. You were never dancing on your bed singing uh, uh, Backstreet Boys? Back streets, back, all right, you know. Okay, so first, I had bunk beds, so that couldn't have happened. I didn't have a TV in my room. Um, so none of that's real. <laughs> and it, that's it's, real. It's, it's totally not possible or feasible. <laughs> that's one thing. So, you know, I grew up from pretty humble, humble means. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you exactly why, but I always had a TV in my bedroom from the time I was like seven. Uh, I know that we got a secondhand television. So that helped, you know, I mean, like, uh, and a secondhand VCR, but like my mother was, I'm sure the statute of limitations is over on this. My mother was the king of stealing cable. Like we, we would split, my mom could splice the cable so that every room had cable all by herself. 
Wow. I remember there being a coaxial cable running all the way up the stairs of our townhouse to get to the mm -hmm. bedrooms because we only wanted to pay for one installation, you know? Yeah, yeah. And when the cable was giving us problems or needed, uh, uh, needed to be checked up, mom would unscrew everything and hide it all. And then the guy would come in and fix everything and then we would plug it back in. So not only did I have TV in my bedroom, but I always had cable. Wow. Uh, I always had cable because every room that had a TV had cable because my mother knew how to, how to take care of business. In fact, I, I remember the hallway had all these little like floor rugs because the cables were running underneath the rugs to get to your bedroom and stuff. Yeah. My mom's cool. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's no, true. She's awesome. No, she is. She is cool. Um, that's really cool. But, but no, uh, I just have fond memories of like mom running long, long coaxial cables, you know, to rooms and using couplers and splitters and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, so I always had cable in, in my room. So, uh, but I remember, I specifically remember when I was sick watching like Star Trek and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Because we had, that was back in the days of continental cable vision. That was what we, how, what cable was before War Time Warner came along. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, when I was also a little older, but not that old, like maybe middle school, that's when like Cartoon Network had a, like, um, that's not the right word, Michelle, um, had that thing that they did and had anime tsunami, but that was later in the day, but I'd still watch it. So there, I don't know. You would watch tsunami. Imagine yeah, that. Yeah, I know, right? Who would have guessed? What was your What was your first? What was your entry? Uh, your like gateway drug anime. Uh, um, I mean, obviously it's Sailor Moon. Like I'm that old, so. <laughs> It was okay sometimes. I mean, I tried to rewatch it recently and it was hard. Like, I think I made it like five episodes and I just kind of stopped, so. What's so, what's so bad about it now? Um, it's just never really good. Okay. Um, it's just a really, you know, very generic, uh, magical girl anime, so it's I okay. Rem I remember all the kids loving Inuyasha when I was a kid. Yeah, that was a little bit later than <clears throat> than Sailor Moon would have been, I guess, here at least. Yeah, no, I mean, this would have been when I was like 16 or 17. Yeah. Everyone was really into Inuyasha. And uh, I, I, a lot of my friends in school called themselves by anime names. Yeah, you had told me and that made me kind of upset, so. I mean, like, it was super common. Uh, and I, even then, I was just like, no, your name is Brian. <laughs> I'm not going to call you Tsushima or some shit uh that's not i don't think that's a name of a person i think that's that from that video game that i want to buy with the samurai <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah i think i'm gonna end up getting that game by the way i uh i saw some yeah. gameplay footage and it looks really good good and i like samurai i mean not as much as ninjas but i like samurai they're all right yeah yeah they're okay <laughs> they're perfectly fine mm -hmm. uh <laughs> So, well, okay, so were you a fake sick kid or did you not do that? I didn't do that. Um, I, I did. There were probably a couple of times where I was allowed to just not go to school one oh, day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but I never, days. like, faked sick. No. Never? I'm not that kind of, I'm not, no. Why would I fake? No, I'm, no, that's bad. Oh, look at, look at Madam Queen on her throne right here. You don't, not, I don't want to lie to my parents and all make I them do concerned. Is, all I do is not watch Unsolved Mysteries and never lie about being sick. You know how scared I am of being sick? I'm not, I'm not messing around with that. I mean, you could have just said like my stomach's really upset. They would have never believed that because, because of, because I'm me. So I would have had to be like having an anxiety attack for them to believe that, and then it happened. So, wow, I didn't realize you were such a straight arrow. I, I mean, I didn't fake sick all the time, but um, but especially when I was younger, I couldn't get away with just being like, "Please don't make me go to school today." Like I'm so mm -hmm. miserable. Mm -hmm. um, once I was like 12, 13, I there were many times I didn't go to school because I was just miserable. I'm like sorry. it was just so bad. That's eh, all right. I was just bullied and stuff. 
I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, look at I, I learned so much about you. You so you weren't bullied, really? Um yeah, I mean, I, it, it's it's hard to you know, I think I we had talked about this a little bit in the past, but I think we were kind of just just the way our schools operated was a little bit differently. So I didn't really know people who got like physically bullied. Um it was more like emotional type stuff. Um so I was definitely not liked by some people um, and I definitely had issues with that kind of stuff, but like I was never like physically bullied by people. Mm. Do you think that's why you're soft now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish someone would have just hit me really hard. <laughs> uh, the emotional stuff is better for hardening than uh, physical stuff though. I mean, it's, I, I, I will, I won't say that there's no benefit to learning how to take a hit. Like it's good to know how to take a punch, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say that like, you can't get by in life if you never get punched. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's true, but I do think there is a benefit to people being mean to you. Um, and you having to kind of get over it. Not that, I mean, I don't, I, it's complicated. There was a time maybe five or six years ago when I really thought that you, that like, that was good for you. Like that you shouldn't avoid that. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if I'm sold on that. Yeah. Remember we were like reading like a study that said that like, it wasn't actually beneficial several years ago to get like, that people who were bullied were actually not, didn't you know normally do better in life or something i feel like we read that yeah but then i tweeted the guy who did the study and i said nice study dickweed i'm gonna kick your ass and then he said that thank you for making me a better person and you were like there, there i, I knew it you. and then he, re he 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 took back his whole study so he now it redacted yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like i stand corrected yeah, I am uh, a better person now. I am a better person now. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do think, I guess my point is that it's like, obviously adversity builds character and builds strength. And, and you know, lots of people who are very successful and, and good people have, you know, stood against adversity. But I don't know that exposing yourself to adversity when you can avoid it is wise, if that makes sense. Like, like I do think that, you know, you can if you choose to gain something positive from being bullied, you can. But I don't know if that's an argument for like, so send your kid to public school because they need to learn how to deal with conflict. I don't know if that makes sense anymore, but I used to believe that uh, okay. to some extent. Yeah, I understand that. I don't believe that. I, I mean, I think, I think you, you're like, because we're all, you know, have genes and genetic differences, I think, the way that you take any situation is is you know just based on who you are as a person so some people are able to like really like grow from things and be like i don't want to treat people like that or like learn things or you know whatever and then some people just get bitter and angry and just turn that back on other people so so what you're saying is a defensive eugenics yeah i mean <laughs> just, just like I think everyone should understand that, like, that's all I've been saying this entire time. <laughs> um, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't doubt that nature is a part of it, but I do think nurture is a big part, too. Oh, no, totally. But I think, you know, because nature is a part of it, we all react differently mm -hmm. to trauma and that kind of stuff. So you have people who have gone through, like, really rough things and are okay, and then you have people who are just totally messed up. Scientific American published a study about that about, now I think it was seven or eight years ago, and it was considered highly controversial. All they did was they, they discovered that, it was a study on sexual assault, and they discovered that um, a large portion of people who experience sexual assault deal with it completely like it's just a very unpleasant memory that that it's actually an exception to the rule that it like affects every part of your life from then on that that's actually not average but but that because those people need the most help they would mm -hmm. obviously get the most attention i mean that make and that only makes sense sure um sure. but uh I, I mean people were livid when they published that study and it was like well we were i mean 
we're not saying that it means just get over it. We're saying that some people just don't, they don't focus on it. It depends on your personality. It depends on a lot of other factors. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting. I mean, and, and I, I was at the time I was dating this girl who had been a victim of a very violent crime. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like guy went to prison for 15 years. Wow. And, uh, and she was a big proponent of like, I'm not a victim. I'm only a victim if I am, a, if I choose to be a victim, like yeah. I, the thing happened and now here I am. Um, and she was very like, she hated when people would like linger on something bad that happened to them as like their identity. So, but uh, I remember that article being really interesting. So, but my point is Michelle, I'm glad I've been able to do my part in bullying you to to kind of help you build your character yeah i am i am a stronger better person for it so <laughs> you, you know i mean it, i can laugh about it now but like the first five years of our friendship i was just always afraid that all i that i was just bullying you into being my friend and that like you just felt like you had no choice you were just like ah, i don't want to hang out with him but he's so loud like, <laughs> <laughs> how do i stop it like, i don't want to hang out with him but he like suggested a thing and insisted um and i mean i have that fear with lots of friends but with you in particular because you're a little little more on the quiet side um not horribly so but you know um but a little bit you disagree no <laughs> You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, like, no. <laughs> I'm going to make you really uncomfortable by denying that. No, what? what? <laughs> no, but uh, but that was like a, an insecurity. I mean, especially because we became friends when we were like, I was like 21, 22. Something I mean, like, like early 20s. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the whole, that's a lifetime ago, it feels like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but so back then I was always like, does she really want to hang out with me? Or is she just like not able to say no because I talk so much? <laughs> I wish I was joking. That's a, that was a real concern I had. No, I I understand. It's because I don't have emotions and I can't show them to people. <laughs> well, how could you sh- not? Sh- how could you? If you don't have emotions, of course you can't show them to people. Exactly. Exactly. It was just furthering the point. <laughs> it's like saying like I don't have a Corvette, so I can't show it to people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But no, it, uh, uh, it took me, it took me a long time. I mean, although, I mean, we've been mostly, the majority of our friendship has been states apart. So mm-hmm. yeah. it's not like, it's not like we're like hanging out every Monday, Wednesday and, and Friday. And also I'm like struggling with this. I mean, we would see each other a couple of times a year and talk on the phone. Mm-hmm. And I would, I, but I would just always be like, I worry that she's not getting to say anything she wants to say because I never shut up. I don't, it, the, the thing is, like, I don't have any thoughts or opinions of my own, so <laughs> I just let everyone else talk, and then it's fine, and no one will know. <laughs> I, I think you think I'm making that up. <laughs> I do, I do know, um, I learned this about you, I'm pretty sure, and tell me if this is wrong, mm-hmm. but when I, uh, when I came and stayed with you for a little while, when you were recovering from your shoulder surgery, um, that was the most, I mean, we were, we spent like six to seven days together. Like it was something yeah. like that. That's a long time. I mean, to, to like live in someone's house with them. I mean, that's a while. It's longer. I mean, like I've lived with like, n- like other than roommates, no one that long, you know, uh, like wow. it's one of those things where it's like, I either lived with them for like two years or, you know, maybe stayed that night two days at their house, mm-hmm. you know, like there's no in between it seems. But um, I remember at one point, like, uh, constantly trying to give you a, a, a voice, you know, because like, I was afraid that I was talking over you or not letting you choose things. And I just kind of realized at one point, I was like, no, no, if I make a choice that you're okay with, it's like such a relief to you. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah. You're like, oh, thank you. You took away the, the torment of the anxiety of this decision. Like, like... I guess for lack of a better term, I took what you said at face value. Cause you'd be like, no, I'm cool with, you know, whatever you want. You mean it. Mm-hmm. You really do mean it. What you really you're saying is like, please choose something. I don't have an op. I don't have a thought on that. Yeah, no, basically, you know, and, and that's difficult because like the best thing about living by myself is that I just, just do whatever. Yes. But as soon as there's another person, I'm just like, I don't know. Let's just let them do the thing. I don't care. Well, um, you're not all like that, though. I mean, sometimes when I visit you and stuff, you have, like, a thing you would like to do. 
or like well, a place you would like to go. That's because I would like you to be happy, and I'm gonna try to to to, to, to make a thing. I can't even I can't even remember every, how many times I've been hanging out with you and you've been like I just don't want this to be a horrible experience for you <laughs> but you're spending a couple of days with me. It's got to be. So. But no, uh but so yeah, you but you've taken me to some cool places and shown me some cool stuff that I didn't pick. But it's just I I just kind of learned that like um I guess what I'm really getting at is that I learned that my extrovert mentality like my my outgoing nature is not a detriment which i should know that anyway yeah yeah but but i kind of denied it i guess hmm. i don't know well well it's kind of like i guess i'm thinking about this because i've never this is something i haven't really thought about too much but i guess it's because because we're not because like that's a difference between us like mm-hmm. um although i think you're actually pretty damn outgoing but i think you're it's in your own way i'm a little bit more just like ah, you know but but um, exactly like that. Exactly. Um, but I think that maybe like I would get self-conscious because I would feel like because I'm not like you, like I'm different than you. Like if I feel like that's a good thing, that that's like rude. It's like, oh, look at me not being like you, which makes me good. You know, um. <laughs> that's like, I don't know, my, my I can't speak for everyone who's like quieter or kind of more introverted kind of deal. But my own experience is that I have a really hard time getting along with people who are very introverted. Um, just because that means that I will feel bad that no one is talking. So then I have to try to make conversation. Yeah, and that yeah. is so hard. Every once in a while, it'll be okay because we'll both be like kind of on the same level. But there have been times where I've just been like, I can't do this. I can't handle this. This is too much. None of the stuff I say is fun anyway. Um, so, like, I'd much rather have someone who is, you know, more talkative and more outgoing than me. Otherwise, it really doesn't work. Yeah. And and you're not the only I, – I don't really like using phrases like introvert and extrovert as, like, a sole descriptor because I just mm-hmm. don't really believe anyone – or I believe very few people are, like, solely one or the other. Okay. Like, because people – like, I'll, I'll say I'm an introvert, and then somebody will be explaining, like, oh, yeah, because introverts, like, they get – energy from like being around people I'm like no no, I get tired like I get like I'll hang out with a ton of people I love every second and then when I get home I'm like I need to just I need to just watch Netflix for like a couple of days I I can't I can't like I can't do all this people stuff (laughs) you know like it's not perfect you know yeah I mean if you want we can call it we can call it shy and then we could also call it social anxiety if you Mm -hmm. want yeah well and I also suffer from social anxiety it's but it's it's something I've been and this is another thing. So I, I've, I often thought that I am like naturally introverted. Like that's kind of my gut, but that I've always saw um, appeal in being outgoing. Like, so I kind of work at it to some extent because I enjoy it. I, I know it doesn't make, this isn't a fully no. formed thought. I'm just, I'm just trying to work it out. No, I wonder, I wonder if I'm like the opposite. Like, I'm really outgoing, but I just don't see any merit in it. So I'm just not. Because that's kind of how I feel. That's interesting. Well, because, like, um, I had to explain to somebody once that, like, when I was a teenager selling movies at conventions, I would curl my toes in my shoes to try and alleviate. That's an old theater trick to alleviate anxiety. I would, Mm -hmm. I literally would do a theater trick to, like, feel okay being surrounded by people and telling them stuff about, especially about myself and about my work because I do get social anxiety. And like when I go to like a, I hate parties, I've gotten better at them, but they're really hard. Mm-hmm. And I'll walk into a party and literally not, like my instinct is don't talk to anybody, just stand here. And yeah. then I have to be like, dude, don't do that. Cause then you'll just hate the party and it'll be mostly your fault. Um, I had a, I, cause I have this fear when I go to parties that if I start doing my me thing that I will, people will be mad that I'm like looking for attention and people will be mad that I'm like taking up all the attention. Cause it's not my party. And then every person I've ever known who's invited me to party has been like, why didn't you just tell all your weird stories and stuff? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's not my party. And like, but I invited you to just have a nice time and meet people. But yeah. see, that's why if I throw my own party, it's awesome because I'm like, no, all the attention is kind of for me. And then everybody else mm-hmm. can have some too. Like, I mean, that's the idea. I threw this party. So I will stand in the middle of the room and tell everybody jokes and 
and act goofy or, or, you know, pull out, you know, weird movie props and stuff and tell them stories about them and, and things like that. But if it's someone else's party, I have to really go like, dude, just go be friendly. Just go be friendly. Yeah. It's it, like, but, it, but what if I'm too good at being friendly? What if I become what everybody looks at? Then I'm bad. Um, uh, you've been to like a couple of like family, like extended family events with me or my extended family. Yes. Um, and you, you've been pretty, pretty much you, you know, like you've talked and stuff. My family loves you. Oh, I love your so, family too. That's like, why that all, works like so my well. Extended fa- no, my like extended family loves you. Really? Yeah, they, they think you're awesome. So like, don't, don't worry. About oh, that makes me going to cry. <laughs> You know, if you want to know how sad my life is, you were like, well, you've been to, like, extended family. I thought you were talking about my own life. You're like, you've been to, like, extended family. I was going to be like, not in, like, 15 years. What do you mean? And then you're like, my family. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been to your family's things. <laughs> no, I, um, uh, uh, um, not going to get I'm emotional. Sorry. No, no, no. It's because oh, your family, I'm well, good. especially your direct family, was just, like, so nice to me. The moment they met me, they were just so nice. They're just like, oh my god, Michelle has a friend. <laughs> do, do you remember the first time I visited you at your mother's house? And I, I don't got know. horribly lost? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I, you got I, really lost. And I like called you and I was like, oh, and I was like naming what I've seen. You're like, I have no idea what any, because it was, I lived like an hour north of you mm-hmm. in Jersey. So <laughs> it was just like, I don't know. Because the next day, I was like, I was like lost in like, it felt like the Pine Barrens. Like, it was, uh, I remember I got on a road and I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Cause this is, you know, paper map quest. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Like, where am I going? And <laughs> finally I was on a road and I was like, I'll just take this till I find a thing, you know, like a gas station, even a house. Cause I'm getting so lost. Like even a house where I could be like, can you help me get back to the interstate? You live here. So I just stayed on the road and stayed on the road and it literally dead ended. <laughs> And it dead ended at a like at like a like two little old beat up beat up like brick factory buildings that oh were God. that were abandoned or at least I mean they were in disrepair and a car with no tires. Oh wow. And I literally was like, Well, gonna die. Like this is it. Um so I turned around and drove just the opposite direction. Eventually I found a gas station. Mm-hmm. Um and that's how I, I made it made it to your place. Um but I remember the next day after I got home, I got home that night. The next day, the, I literally woke up at nine in the morning and went straight to Best Buy and bought a GPS. Because <laughs> I was like, well, that's the first time I ever got so lost. I was like, how am I going to get unlost? Yeah, I, I remember like, that. Yeah. I need this GPS. Like, I was, and I was like, I was broke, piss broke. But I was like, $99 for a GPS is fucking worth it after how scared I was last night. Like, I yeah. was really scared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I just remember, uh, you know, meeting your family and them being just super nice. You guys aren't highly traditional. You know, like I can tell like s- the actual stories of my life and people appreciate it. I don't have to like dance around like the really weird stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, I've also discovered that um, in general, I get along really well with families because I, I tend to just... I guess probably from the years of experience now when I meet like it's like here's my family I'm like I'm just gonna be me because like they're mm-hmm. either gonna like me or they're gonna hate me yeah and if it happens if they hate me after five weeks or they hate me now it's really not you know better yeah if, I mean yeah. if they're gonna eventually hate me they're gonna eventually hate me yeah best um, to know early yeah so why not just like try to because if I'm myself I'll get praised um, I had a girlfriend when I lived in Jersey who her family could not believe how friendly I was, like how much I, like, Mm -hmm. they couldn't believe that not only would I come to their house to date their daughter, but that I would like, they would say like, hey, we're all having dinner if you want to join. I'd be like, yeah, and I would go have like dinner with everybody. Mm -hmm. They were just like, this is so weird. Cause you know, like I was like 20, two or 21 or something like that and their daughter was like 22 or 23 you know so like they were used to like if she had a boyfriend or a guy she was seeing they would just go to her room and watch netflix you know and and, mm-hmm. and hide yeah. and i would be the one who was like let's see what your family's doing they're super nice and they were <laughs> they were super nice but um but it got to the point where they would ask they'd like it's hey tomorrow's friday is henrik coming over like <laughs> it's, awesome when we Aww. broke up i think i mostly missed having dinner with her family honestly 
you you could have still called them, you know? Um, I was Facebook friends with her mother like six years later. <laughs> we were still Facebook friends. Her mother was a Star Trek fan, so that's forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, 